Welcome to the Multi Peak Marketing Podcast. Brace yourself because we're bringing you top level value, revealing powerful insights, and speaking to top individuals in the orthodontic industry. Let's start elevating your marketing knowledge with your host, Tyler Terrell. Welcome, everyone, to the Multi Peak Marketing Podcast. I'm here joined today with Dr. Kim Gronberg with Gronberg Orthodontics. Um, how are you doing today, Kim? Doing well. How are you? Doing amazing. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, you, how you started in ortho, and where where that led you to now. Okay. Um, well, I, I live in Highland Village, Texas, and my practice is in the same city. And pretty much that is Louisville Flower Mound area for people that are familiar with Texas, kind of in between Dallas and Fort Worth. And um, we're going into our 14th year of practice, and I started up from scratch. So um, I don't live very far from where I grew up. So, you know, I kind of more of the hometown girl. Um, I grew up in Arlington, Texas, and then went to Baylor in Waco for undergrad and then did dental school in Dallas at Baylor, now part of Texas A&M. So I haven't been very far in my life. I have to travel quite a bit, but (laughs) let's hop into like, why, like, why do you love the area so much? Well, you know, I had an orthodontist in school tell me once, you know, just figure out where you want to live and then you're going to be able to, to make it okay. So, you know, I think there's some truth to that. There's also a little bit of truth to be smart about if you are, especially doing a startup practice you know, go into a growing area. So our area was, was perfect um, because it was growing a lot at the time. You know, you just, you know, the places like Walmart and, you know, all Target and all of those stores, when there starts being a lot of new, one of those put in, they've done their demographics. They know what's going to work. So, you know, I would just say to, to orthodontists, even considering doing a startup, Yes, you can make it work from anywhere. And yes, orthodontics, you're going to be okay no matter where you go. But you, you can be, be a little smarter about where you want to go. And just decide where you want to raise your kids, of course. If yeah. those things line up, then, then you're going to be okay. Um, but yeah, so we love Highland Village. It's kind of a small town with all the amenities of a large town. Um, because like I said, we're pretty much just connected to Flower Mound, Louisville. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a great place to be. Uh, you know, I feel like I, there's a lot of orthodontists that told me you don't want to live in the same town where your practice is, but I f- feel just the opposite. I feel like it's been great living in the same town that I practice in, you know, everybody and you get to sponsor all the schools that your kids are going to, and you know, their friends and, um, you know, so you're just heavily invested, not just, you know, in your own little bubble, but just with your whole community. That's super cool. So how long have you been practicing? So I graduated ortho in 2004. Wow. And I worked in some private practices and kind of a little bit in the corporate world. And then um, I started my own practice in November of 2008. And I actually had started a few patients for about well, about a year and a half before then, um, almost two years. So when I opened up my doors, I already had somewhere around 40 to 50 patients going. So, and I just used a general dentist's office on like Fridays and some Saturdays. And then I was, you know, working during the week. So it was, it was a crazy time with little kids and everything as well, but it was nice to when you start having all the bills due to not start with zero patients but to start with just a few patients already anxious ready to go yes exactly so about 14 years of practicing and you love the community so what what type of things do you do in the community what what different strong points do you have when working with new patients what kind of marketing stuff do you go about yeah um we are probably known as the practice that we sponsor everyone around town. So, um, you know, I've heard a statistic that if you sponsor someone or help someone's kiddo in their activity, they'll tell like two or three people. And if you turn them down, then they tell like seven or eight people. So, (laughs) uh, but we want to, I mean, if I'm going to put marketing dollars somewhere, I'd much rather help the schools and the kids than just some postcard that people throw away in the trash. Right. So, 
and and we do plenty of print marketing and online marketing as well. But you know, we we like to really be present in different activities. Our staff is required to go to two to three events a year, and so they're actually in the community and people recognize them just as much as they do me or our um, other, we have another orthodontist associate. So yeah, I just think, you know, just be real, really get to know people and that pays off. Right on. So you mentioned that like the staff are somehow doing the marketing. So can you branch off a little bit on that? Well, first of all, I I feel so lucky to have the team that I do and the staff that we do. They're just wonderful people. And I've been really blessed to not really have any staff turnover. So we've had the same people with us since I started and just added to it. Like I said, I don't, I don't have what the exact secret sauce is for this, um, other than treat people the way you want to be treated and just be, be good to people. You know, they're working really hard for you and they've got busy lives, just treat them well. And they're going to want to work harder for you. Right. So are you really like the celebrity in the area? (laughs) I don't know. I, you know, my husband says I could run for mayor, Um, (laughs) but I don't know. I I feel like it's, it's a little bit like when you were growing up and you'd see your teacher at the grocery store or something and you'd be like, Oh my gosh, they're a real person. You know? So it is kind of funny when you see people out and about in different places, especially when you don't have scrubs on and they're like, Whoa, she's a real person. She's a real (laughs) person. (laughs) So yeah, no, it is. It's, it is. It's, Fun. Like I said, I don't mind seeing people at the grocery store and, you know, yeah. running into patients or parents here or there. Yeah. That might not be for everybody. Yeah, you have no idea. You know, you have that interaction with the kid that you did, like, you know, you met with them a year ago, like when you took off their braces. And then they're like, you know, little Billy goes and tells like three of his friends, like, hey, I saw uh, Dr. Kim at Walmart. Yeah. No. Yeah. So yeah, don't be a jerk around town. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you might be being watched a little bit. <laughs> but no, it, it's all good. That's so cool. So mayor. <laughs> well, I, no, that that's <laughs> not in the cards for me. He's he's kind of joking, I, I think. <laughs> <laughs> What's your biggest takeaway since you started and, you know, now we're from 2008 to 2022? Like, what have you seen that helps you grow the most? Um, You know, it's been kind of a crazy time because... Uh, my daughter had some serious health issues. She had complete bone marrow failure and uh, was diagnosed with that in December of 2020. So, you know, we had COVID shut down and we were just coming back. She had had an appendicitis and Mm. then had some complications from that, that I think led to this bone marrow failure. So she had no immune system. So I was actually having to stay home for a while. And our associate orthodontists were, you know, carrying the load for a little bit. So it's a little bit of a crazy time that I'm just kind of getting back in full swing. So, you know, there's going to be times like that for everyone in practice where, you know, you're just trying to hold, (laughs) you know, so I wasn't thinking about growing uh, during that time. Of course, I was just trying to keep my head above water. Um, But thankfully, she's doing really well now. And, um, you know, so we are kind of getting back into the mode that we've always been in of, okay, what can we do to grow? A lot of my friends have multiple practices. So obviously, that's a smart financial decision. I, I never did that just because I just feel like it would have put life out of balance for me too much. I, I, I think um, just know your own life because you're only going to grow as much as you can really handle without starting to have problems with your family or if you're spreading yourself too thin, you're not going to be good for any, anybody or anything. Well said. <laughs> yeah. So I think just like I said, your staff is your biggest marketing tool. Well, you are also. And if, if life's getting way too far out of balance, you're not going to be good in any realm of this whole thing. So, and like I said, there's going to be moments when you go through tough times, just like we got out of right now. Um, But, you know, don't try to add to it. (laughs) Those times are going to come no matter what, don't, don't make it worse by trying to either take on too much or wear too many hats. You know, you can't be all things to all people all the time. Right. And so like, obviously adapting to different things, um, like you mentioned, like when COVID happened, like what's, what's the plan there? Um, so 
what different um, areas have you had to work on? Like, I know you're really strong about like attending and making sure your staff attends like conferences and learning and constantly learning and working on themselves. So have you found that as like, you know, the more you do that, the more you see your practice, practice succeed? Yes. Again, I think it's morale is more important than anything. And yes, you're going to learn something new every time you go to something, but just getting out of your box is important because, you know, we're, when you start to feel like rats in a cage, you're not going to be good to anyone again, you know? So it's just all the things like, you know, when life is feeling better for yourself, you know, when you're break up the monotony a little bit, you know? Um, So I think, although it's very expensive to take your staff to conferences or trips, man, I, I just think it pays off. Yeah. You know, two to three fold, um, maybe more, uh, just because it's so important for them to bond as a team and, and right. just for their overall mental well being. Yeah. That's super awesome. So switching gears, I want to go back into, um, you mentioned, your community. So like what different things do you specifically do? Like you said, you're all over the stuff. So um, how are you getting so connected and involved in your community to where you could be the mayor? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, nah, don't quote me on that one. <laughs> oh, and no, no intention on that at all. Um, you know, like I said, living in your own community just gives you an easy leg up because you know everybody already anyway. But you're any young orthodontist getting started, you're going to start having people approach you. And I think it's easy to be like, Oh, let's not do that. We don't have time for that. But it really is. I I feel like, especially when you're starting a practice or just trying to get your name as the new, the new person out there, just go to those school carnivals and, and, you know, go to the games and just go where the kids are, you know, and then they're going to see you there. And, you know, they're going to be like, Oh, okay. Timmy needs orthodontics. Oh, you know who I just saw at the baseball game last weekend, you know, was whichever doctor. And I just think that makes a difference. So it's kind of easy. You're just by default doing those things when you have kids the same age and you're just at those things anyway. But I think, um, you know, come up with a plan for when you're approached by schools. Like I said, you can't physically sometimes be there at every event. And that's why I've split it up for our staff members to all take two events a year, you know, and so you can cover more of those things. And then of, of course, make sure you're wearing your, your you know, t-shirt and make sure you have your name all over everything. I can't tell you, you know, all the marketing things that people do, they'll bring us like, let's say donuts or something to the office. And then they don't put their sticker on it. And you're like, so why did you even bring this? Nobody in the back, none of the staff knows who even brought it, you know? Yeah. So just simple things like that. Like if you're going to do something, make sure your name is all over it. Right. Make sure you have your logo all over it. Yeah, sure you exactly. Have branding all over it because they're going to see that logo and that's going to be very good for brand awareness. Um, yeah. Not just, you know, getting donuts, but like yeah. all over schools, you know, wearing your t-shirt, wearing, wearing all that stuff. Yeah, exactly. And then of course your realm, make sure when you're doing any of these things, just put it all over social media, you know, everywhere online. Have you ran any like contests before? Oh yeah. We do a contest every month and need to be better about making sure we're posting all of those things, but yeah, yeah, we, we have a lady that we use that kind of just feeds us different contests every month and all the graphics for it and everything. So what have you seen the results from that? It's really hard to track any of that. You know, there's so many things you can't really completely track, but it's one of those morale feel good. You're just setting a tone for the office, you know? So, yeah, I mean, so many things in marketing, it's hard to know the exact ROI on. Yeah. What have you seen the best ROI on? I would say, gosh, it's hard to really, really say other than I would say be the best orthodontist you can be so that you get the second and the third and the fourth child, you know? Right. I mean, part of this comes down to you can spend your time and energy looking into all these other things, but really when it comes down to it, you need to 
be good at what you do. <laughs> right. Like you should be able to market yourself. Like your work should be able to yes. spread out like wildfire. Yeah, exactly. Do good work. And people are going to talk about that, you know? So, and they're going to want to bring their next kids yeah. to eat. They're going to want yeah. their kids and their, their parents and their grandparents. And their- yeah. <laughs> Again, so no, no magic bullet here. Yeah. Other That's than so just cool. do it all. Yeah. That's so cool. Um, so before we wrap things up here, is there any like golden nuggets that you would like to provide? Like after these 14 years you've been working, like what takeaways can you give someone? I really feel like the, the best thing people can do is <laughs> the never ending quest for balance. Like I said, um, I've, I've seen several orthodontists kind of implode over the years. And it's because life was getting out of balance. Um, so, you know, there's always some kind of cr- crazy thing you can think about doing and I need to be doing this and I need to be doing that. But at the same time, you need some stillness also. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you need some recharge time and, and you've got to put first things first in your life. Right. So, and when you do that, then you're going to be in a better place to be a better leader to your staff and, uh, you know, a better spouse and a better whatever. And then your business will follow. Right. I believe in that as well. Um, Just, you know, you said it really well, really balancing your life and orthodontics. Yeah. And, you know, I would like to say I'm I'm practicing what I preach. Of course, I'm not many days, (laughs) but you just keep trying to reevaluate and kind of refocus where you need to be. Right. I love it. Well, thank you so much for, um, you know, coming on to the podcast. Um, You said a lot of amazing things. Um, Is there anywhere uh, someone that is, you know, if they have a question about something that you might have mentioned, can they reach you out somewhere? Like maybe. Sure. Absolutely. Yes. Um, You know, our, our website is gronbergorthodontics.com. You know, you can also uh, email me anytime. It's kgronberg at gronbergorthodontics.com. So um, yeah, reach out to us, you know, call the office, uh, love to talk to anybody that has any questions. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks so much for having me on.